text Vinaya Master Hui Ching of Sutro was the Kamadana. Vinaya Master Tung Ying of Ching Chao was the teaching transmitter. Vinaya Master Chi Yito Luo of Central India recited the precepts. Chipitaka Master Mi Tua of India was the precept certifier. Commentary Ting Fu Pao writes that there should be four Kama Danas, yet the Sutra mentions only one. He says that the one mentioned was the most famous of the four because he didn't understand the precepts. His commentary is confused. There was only one Kamadana. Kamadana is a Sanskrit word which means to arrange events or to explain rules. The Kamadana makes certain that everything is done in accord with Dharma, in accord with the rules established by Shakyamuni Buddha. Anything not in accord with the Buddha's rules is unacceptable to the Kamadana. When conferring, conferring the precepts, the precept transmitter asks the Kamadana, May the precepts be transmitted to this person? The question is asked three times, and each time the Kamadana must reply, Yes. Yes. On the precept platform, the Kamadana and the teaching transmitter sit immediately to the left and right of the precept transmitter. The remaining Seven certifiers sit on either side. That is the arrangement of the three masters and seven certifiers. They represent the Buddhas of the ten directions in speaking Dharma and transmitting precepts. Therefore, when leaving home, receiving precepts is especially important. The teaching transmitter transmits the sutras. True to law transliterated from the Sanskrit means flower of merit and virtue. Dharma Master Mi Tua understand understood the three divisions of the Tripitaka, Sutras, Sastras and Vinaya, and so he is called the Tripitaka Master. He is closely associated with the Chinese Vinaya because he translated the Dharma Gutta Vinaya from the Sanskrit into Chinese. All the precept spirits protect this intelligent master, and there are many miraculous, miraculous events connected with his life. Mitua means flourishing. His full name was Tamo Mitua, flourishing drama. Text Construction of the precept platform had begun in the former Song dynasty by Tripitaka Master Gunabhadra. He erected a stone tablet which said, In the future, a Bodhisattva in the flesh will receive the precepts in this very place. Commentary The former Song was the dynasty that preceded the Sui dynasty, not the well known Song dynasty of Sung Tai Tzu. Gunabhadra means a worthy of merit and virtue. This master established a precept platform at what is now called Kuang Xiao Monastery. He is engraving foretold the coming of a Bodhisattva in the flesh, not a Bodhisattva who had gone to Nirvana, but a living Bodhisattva. Text further in the first year of the Tian Chen reign of the Lang Dynasty, A.D. 502, Tripitaka Master Nanabai Shaya came by sea from West India carrying a Bodhi tree branch, which he planted beside the platform. He too made a prophecy saying, After 170 years, a, Bud a Bodhisattva in the flesh will proclaim the suffering vehicle beneath this tree, taking measureless multitudes across. He will be a true transmitter of the Buddha's mind seal, a Dharma host. Commentary Chibitaka Master Na Na Bashaya Wisdom Medicine predicted that a living Bodhisattva would speak the suffering vehicle Dharma from beneath that Bodhi tree, teaching the Dharma of a direct pointing to the mind 
to see the nature and realize Buddhahood. As a true transmitter of the Buddha's mind seal, this Bodhisattva would use the mind to seal the mind. Shakyamuni Buddha held a flower in his fingers and smi uh, smiling subtly, transmitted the mind seal of all the Buddhas to the first patriarch, Mahakashyapa. Transmitters of the mind seal are patriarchs. A Dharma host is one who lectures sutras and explains the Dharma. Nana Bashaya brought a Bodhi tree brand from India to China, not a whole tree, just a cutting. Bodhi trees will grow almost anywhere. There are many such trees in China today. The Venerable Master Nana Bashaya's flesh body has not decayed. It is preserved for veneration at Yuhua Monastery about five miles from Nanhua Monastery. The caretaker there, who has left home, does not feed visitors, so if you wish to visit, you must bring your own food. When I was living at Nanhua Temple, I went to see the Master Nana Bashaya's body and found it in excellent condition. Text In keeping with the former predictions, the Master arrived to have his hair cut and to receive the precepts, his, he instructed the four assemblies on the essentials of the exclusive Dharma transmission. Commentary The Sikh Vajrayak had his head shaved and received the complete precepts. He then explained the Dharma for the four assemblies, teaching them the exclusive Dharma transmission, that is the Dharma which has been passed down through every generation since the time of Shakyamuni Buddha. Text In the spring of the following year, the master took leave of the assembly and returned to Paolin. Ying Tung, together with more than a thousand black robed monks and white robed lay folk, accompanied him directly to Cao Tzu. Commentary The Sikh Patriarch left and returned to Cao Tzu. The black robed are those who have left home. At that time, lay people wore white robes. They all went directly to South Tzu with the master. Some people say that they have been to Tao Tzu when they have not. They falsely claim to transmit the Tao Tzu Dharma and Dhyana source the basis of meditation. The Dharma ending age is just that, false Buddhist with phony credentials. Text at that time, Vinaya Master Tung Ying of Chintro and several hundred students followed the master and came to dwell there. When the master arrived at Pao Lin in Tao Tzu, he saw that the whole, the buildings were bleak and small, insufficient to contain the multitude. Wishing to enlarge them, he paid a visit to the villager Chen Yaxian and said, this old monk comes to the alms giver seeking a sitting cloth worth of ground. Of ground, is that possible? Commentary: As soon as he realized that the great master was a sixth patriarch, a transmitter of the Buddha's mighty seal, Vinaya Master Tung Ying led his disciples to Tao Tzu to study the drama under the great master. When the sixth patriarch arrived at Tao Tzu. He saw that the buildings were too small. Wishing to enlarge them, he paid a visit to a wealthy landowner, Chen Yaxian. In this passage, the sixth patriarch refers to himself as the old monk. When he was 24, he went to see Huang Mei. Then he hid for 16 years. At 40 years of age, he called himself an old monk. And so am entitled to do the same. The master told Chen Yaxian that if he gave arms, he could transcend birth and death. Text Xian asked, How big is the high master's sitting cloth? The master took out his sitting cloth and showed it to Yaxian, who thereupon agreed. 
But when the patriarch unfolded and spread out his sitting cloth, it completely covered the four borders of Tao Tzu. For the four heavenly kings appeared and sat as protectors in each of the four directions. Commentary The great master handed his sitting cloth to Chen Yaxian, who said, If you only want that large uh, a piece of land, fine. But when he spread it out, the sitting cloth covered not only the area around Nanhua Monastery, but everything within ten miles of where they stood. The four heavenly kings appeared and stood guard in each of the four directions. Text. It is due to this occurrence that the mountain range bordering the monastery is called the range of the heavenly kings. Sian said, I know that the high master's dharma power is vast and great. However, the burial ground of my great-great-grandfather lies on this land. In the future, if you build a stupa, I hope that this area will remain undisturbed. As for the rest, I wish to give it all to be forever a treasured, treasured place. This ground has a flowing current of a living dragon and a white elephant. Level only heaven, do not level earth. Later, the monastery was constructed according to his words. The master roamed within these boundaries, and at places where the scenes of nature were fine, he stopped to rest. Commentary The area belongs to a living dragon. It has a flowing current, and the mountain is like an elephant. Here, one may build a treasured place, a bodhimanda. Level only heaven, do not level earth. That is, where the land is high, the buildings may be made lower, and where the land is low, the building may be made taller. But do not level the earth, for if you do, not, uh, if you, do you will ruin the fine conditions of wind and water, and the land will lose its efficacious energies. The sixth patriarch opened round about the countryside and stopped to rest where the landscapes were especially beautiful. Text accordingly, 13 Araniyas were erected, among them the present Hua Kua Ho. The site of the Paolin Bodhimanda was decided upon long ago by Indian Chipitaka master Nanabashaya, who during his journey from Nanhai passed through Taosu where he cupped up the water with his hands and found it to be delicious. Surprised, he told his disciples, this water is not different from that in India. Its source would surely be the seventh site on which to build a monastery. He followed the water and looked in the four directions. The mountains and waters encircled one another and the peaks were impressive. He sighed and said, This is just like Jood Wood Mountain in India. Commentary Why is the area around Nanhua Monastery called Paolin? Paolin means Jood Wood. When the venerable Nanabashaya drank the water at Tao Su, its taste was identical to that of the water in a certain place in India. He knew that the source of the spring was indeed an efficacious, efficacious spot on which to build a temple. At dusk, he reached the site of Nanwa Monastery, gazing up at the mountain. He said, This mountain looks just like Jod Wood Mountain in India. We shall call this Jod Wood Bodhimanda. Master Nana Pashaya was not alone. Many of his Disciples were traveling with him, he said to them. The source of this stream is certainly a good site for building a temple. Monastic buildings are called Araniyas, a Sanskrit word meaning silent place. They are pure, quiet places for cultivation. The clear blue waters reflected the bright, shining mountain peaks. The area was particularly beautiful. Text, he said, to the villagers of Tao Ho. A pure dwelling may be built here, 
After 170 years, the unsurpassed Dharma Jewel will teach here. Those who attain the way in this place will be as numerous as the trees of this forest. It should, therefore, be called Pao Lin. At that time, Magistrate Ho Ching Chung of Shao Chou reported this words to the Emperor, who assented and conferred upon it the name Pao Lin Bodhimanda. The construction of the pure homes began in the third year of the Tianqian reign of the Liang Dynasty, AD 504. Commentary The village was called Zhao Ho, descendants of Tao, because its inhabitants were descendants of General Tao Tao of the period of the Three Kingdoms. 170 years after Master Nana Bashaya made this prediction, the Sikh patriarch received the precepts and taught living beings at Pao Lin. The unsurpassed Dharma Jewel refers to the Sikh patriarch. Sangha and lay people who were to attain enlightenment at this place would be as numerous as the trees in a forest. It was therefore to be called Jewel Wood. Text in front of the home was a pond in which a dragon often swam, bumping and scrapping the trees of the forest. One day he appeared larger than ever, covering the area with a thick mist. The disciples were afraid. The patriarch scolded him, saying, Ha, ah, you can only make yourself appear in a large body, not in a small one. If you were a divine dragon, you could transform the great into the small and the small into the great. Commentary The dragon was so big that you could only see the dragon. You couldn't see the pond at all. He danced on top of the water, splashing it everywhere in waves which were 10 feet, 20 feet, and even 30 feet high. He was showing off. Incredible, said the disciples. This dragon certainly intends to harm us. The Sikh Patriarch shouted at the dragon. He said, If you really had spiritual powers, you could transform nothing into something and something into nothing. You could transform yourself and not be transformed just as you wished, manifesting the great within the small and the small within the great. Taste the dragon suddenly disappeared but returned an instant later in a small body skipping about on the surface of the pond. The master held out his bow and teased him, saying, You don't dare climb into the old bishop's bow. At that moment, the dragon swam in front of the master, who scooped him out of the water with his bow. The dragon couldn't move. Holding the bow, the master returned to the home and explained the drama to the dragon. Commentary when the dragon heard the sixth patriarch dared him, dare him to manifest a small body, he disappeared. Strange, think about it. Suddenly he wasn't there. Then in the town, it takes to fill a hunger pan, a little dragon appeared, dancing on top of the water. The great master said, You have a little body now, but you wouldn't dare get into my boat, would you? You wouldn't dare, dragon, I dare you to get into my bow, into my bow. The dragon flew across the water and swam up before the patriarch. The patriarch didn't wait for the dragon to jump into his bow, but reached right down and scooped him out of the water. In Manchuria, where I am from, there is a saying, before there were people in Manchuria, you could scoop up the fish, with a bucket and chickens fell into the cooking pot. As for rabbits, you could just step outside, swing a stick and knock over a few. This is what is meant by scooped. Catching the dragon was as easy as scooping for fish in Manchuria. Text The dragon then shed his skin and left. His bones only seven inches long and complete with head, tail, horns and claws were preserved in the temple. Later the master filled in the pond with earth and stones. 
Now in that place, in the front of the hole, on the right side, is an iron stupa. Commentary: Drama Master Far has introduction says that the pond was on the left side of the hole, but it was actually on the right. One commentator, Ting Fu Pao, had never been there, and consequently did not realize that the direction of the pond should have been determined from the project's position when sitting in the hole, that is, on the right side.